muggles and wizards alike. I have some exciting things to share with you today. Thank you to Carolyn for being here as well. Hi! Hi, Jen! I'd like to introduce you to some magical creatures. Our first one today is a dragon that blows bubbles. So once you have your bottle and you have your cloth wrapped around there with rubber bands, you can decorate this however you'd like. I chose today to make a dragon because I think dragons are amazing. I really wanted my dragon to be able to breathe bubbles or fire that is rainbow in color. So I'm going to add some different colors of food coloring here and make sure of course that you're okay with damaging this because it's probably not going to come out so i'm going to add some blue food coloring i'm going to add some green food coloring it's my favorite color oh yes all right we have some yellow see i'm just adding it along there Yellow looks really orange when you first put it on. And, you know, even us wizards are quarantined right now, so I don't have my usual supply of food coloring like we do at the museum. But I do have some red food coloring here in gel form. We're gonna test it out and see how that goes. All right. So now we've got our creature built, our magical creature built. And I've got just a regular pan here. I'm gonna set my dragon down for a moment so I can pour my bubble solution out. And we showed you on another video how to make this bubble solution, but I'm gonna include the recipe right here. All right, here we go. Here's some bubble solution into the pan. This bubble solution has been sitting out a little bit. I've just kept it in a jar in my house. So we should be pretty good to go. It should produce some nice bubbles that want to stick around. All right, are we ready? getting some good bubbles out on my dragon is making rainbow bubbles happy magic making back to you Carolyn I am so excited to play with bubbles with you guys today but first, I wanted to share with you this book, The Bubble Factory by Tommy DePaola. It's a story of two twins, Sam and Molly, who are always getting into trouble. So one day, to keep them busy, 
their grandpa takes them down to the bubble factory where he used to work. They get a tour of the whole factory, see the most amazing kinds of bubbles. But before you know it, they sneak off into the bubble lab and they make a huge mess, making all kinds of different bubbles. But at the end, they've made the most amazing bubble you could ever imagine. And the bubble factory owner is so happy he invites them back for a future visit. What is a wizard to do when all of the wand shops are closed? Today, we're gonna look at how to make our own wand. And we're gonna make this one a little bit extra special. The first thing you need is a good sturdy piece of wood, or maybe you've wrapped up a piece of paper that you want to use, a paper dowel. You can use a dowel rod, you can use, um, anything that you can find that you feel has the magic in it. The other thing you're gonna need is some wire. Um, it could even be pipe cleaners. Uh, maybe if you make a small one, you could use a paper clip, but we're going to need something to fashion the end of our wand. And then something to bend it with. So I have cut a piece of wire here and as I'm fashion fashioning this into the end of my wand, there's really a question that I want to answer, a scientific question that I'm going to look at. So you can see that I've twisted my wire into kind of a star shape here because I wonder if I make a bubble wand with a star shape at the end, if I can make star shaped bubbles. Why do you think that would happen or not happen? We're going to find out. All right, wizards and muggles, if you've got your wand ready, you want to put it into kind of a shallow container of your, your bubbles. One of the tricky things in getting this right is that all of the surfaces have to be in contact in order to get a good bubble. Here's the moment of magic. Did you see that? Let's try it again. It looks like we're getting separate round bubbles. That bubble is just every bit as round as when I use my round bubble wand. So why that happen? Why are we getting round bubbles instead of triangular bubbles or square bubbles or even star-shaped bubbles. If you watch the bubble being formed, you may notice that it starts off being more of an elongated oval shape. Bubbles are made of this thin layer of liquid. The molecules are trying to stay together and that's called cohesion. As the air molecules inside are pushing outward, they're trapped inside. The bubble keeps trying to get back to the most compact shape that it can, which is a sphere. Something you might notice about the way bubbles form is that it happens the same way, no matter how big the bubble is. So here you can see that Carolyn has created a giant bubble using two sticks and a hoop made of string. The bubble is much bigger than the bubbles that we blow with our wands, and yet it still forms a sphere or round shape. Jen, I love your bubble wands. They're fantastic. I made a few too that I want to share with you. 
You know how I've been talking a little bit about knot theory lately and knots that mathematicians study? These aren't knots like you tie your shoes with. These are knots that never ends, like the ends are joined together. Well, I made my bubble wands like three different mathematical knots. I made the sink foil, which you can see here, it basically looks like a star shape, but a sink foil has five crossings, five places where the, in this case, wire crosses over itself. I also made a trefoil, which you might guess has three places that the wire crosses over itself. And I also made a very special one called the unknot. And this one, I decorated it a little bit. Let's give them a try. Ready? My prep oil knot. Let's tie one with my sink foil or star shaped bubble blower. Tiny one. That came out of the arm of the star. Another little tiny one out of the arm of the star. Let me try one more time. There we go. Woo! Did you notice that both of those bubbles, all the bubbles I blew with my sink foil and my trefoil knots, still came out as spheres, just like yours, Dad? Finally, my very fancy unknot. There are no crossings. It's a circle, a ring. It's called the unknot, and I decorated with some beads. also came out like a sphere, a ball shape. So did that one. So those are just some bubble ones that I made over here. I love yours too. Okay, everybody, it's time for our last bubbles demonstration. Jen, I bet you've done this before. It's a bubble volcano. Are you guys ready? Let's give it a try. For this, we need a two liter bottle. This one's almost full up. With warm water, I'm going to put a little funnel on top of that and add a couple spoonfuls of baking soda. Let's see. Sprinkle that down in there. Here's a couple. Oh, let's put a little bit more in than that. That's not looking very good. The more baking soda, the more bubbles we end up with. All right. <laughs> Look at all that baking soda getting down right down into my bottle. Great. So what this is going to do, baking soda is a base and it's going to react with the acid that we put in next for a very dramatic chemical reaction. All right. This is the acid. It's just vinegar that you can buy at the store for cleaning or food or whatever. We're just going to add it right here to the top of this bottle. Let's see how many bubbles we get. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God! So Carolyn and I are just going to set up this one last piece of this today. What was that?
边，站住，站住，站住。Thank you so much for coming along with us today to the Wizard Bubble Factory. Again, my name is Jen. This is Carolyn. Bye. See you guys later. And we want to remind you that until we get to meet again, take care of all those muggles in your life. They need it. Go out there and discover the world that you live in. Can't wait to see you again sometime in person. Bye. Thank you.